going to be a, a quick video going over the changes, updates that I made to the lathe prior to the Champlain Mini Maker Fair. fair. Um, I was going to do it anyways, but uh, it definitely was good motivation to get it done. And the lathe is kind of at the point now where I'm um, I'm fairly happy using it. Um, it doesn't get as dirty. My hands aren't getting as dirty using the hand wheels. Um, you know, there's uh, some features that I wanted anyways, like chip guard and, and, and other things. So. I'm going to go through each section, kind of just talk about the things that I did, and then uh, maybe at the end talk about where I'm going to take it moving forward. So the uh, chip guard is composed of this, you know, obviously this fairly thick piece of steel in the back um, connected to the box and also this front piece with a piece of uh, angle aluminum and uh, it keeps it fairly clean. Unlike the prior design, there's uh, not a lot of uh, places for the chips to go, um, whereas before they were kind of getting into the motor and, and causing some potential issues. So this this right here keeps the uh, the case very clean, and um, I also tightened it up, kind of around the uh, the spindle, so it looks a lot nicer. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's worked pretty well. So the next main update was getting all the aluminum hand wheels cleaned, buffed, and clear coated. Um, I never really took the time or had the chance to do it before, and I'd use nitrile uh, gloves when using the machine, and I, you know, got a lot of flack from people for using gloves while operating a lathe, and I understand that. So at this point, they uh, they stay pretty clean. They're not getting my hands all dirty, and um, and it's been a fantastic little uh, little upgrade. Um, nice and smooth, they feel good, and the uh, the clear coat's been holding up. I mean, I think I put like you know maybe ten coats on each one, so um, I, it should hold up for a while. Anyways, um, and the next thing with the hand wheels was um, I kind of was getting tired of using the set screws. Sometimes they'd slip out. You know, I, I could obviously have filed a flat on the ends, but um, instead I kind of decided to use uh, acorn nuts and um, you know jam basically the um the hand wheels between the acorn nuts and another uh you know another nut on the inside except on this one obviously i haven't done that one yet but uh i'll get to it at some point so so that's been nice um they don't slip out or anything and the acorn nuts you know add a little bit of an attractive uh aspect to the lathe you know gives it a nice look so that that's been a good upgrade um as well So the tailstock uh, set over has kind of been, you know, a little bit of an annoyance. The, um, you know, the clamping boss threads stripped out a while ago, and I was, uh, you know, really finagling to get it to continue to lock the uh, ram. Um, basically what I ended up doing was uh, like a fender washer and tapping it and mounting it to to the tailstock, and that's worked out really well. Um, yeah, it looks looks a little like you know the you know it, it, it doesn't look perfect, but uh, but it does a good enough job for now. Um, the back, I ended up replacing what was in the book with a uh, you know ball bearing, so it's kind of like a two piece now where the <clears throat> ball bearing sandwiched in between there, and then uh, you know there's uh, jam nuts on each side that kind of hold hold the uh, the feed screw you know onto the bearing so you know now I have nice smooth action which has been um, you know a really neat little upgrade there and I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that so that's the tailstock upgrades at some point I might just uh, redo the whole uh, set over you have a different clamping setup and, and all that but uh, at this point it's working So the next thing to do is to update the case a little bit um, from using the lathe. It was getting extremely dirty and I just put some um, some clear coats on it initially which you know didn't hold up very well and um, I ended up having to replace some panels, sanded it all down, put some polyurethane on there and um, I also had some clear laminate that I put on all of the uh, surfaces that would get dirty and that's holding up really well. I mean I can almost just take a wet cloth and and clean it off now which has been um, really beneficial keeps it looking sharp 
so that that's been nice. Um, I do like the wood look, even though it's probably not the most practical thing for a machine tool in a dirty shop, but that was a, a nice update. I have uh, bigger ports for air, a uh, bigger fan blowing air on the motor, which is keeping it a lot cooler, um, which is very beneficial. Same setup for the electronics, though I do have this uh, aluminum you know, a mesh screen kind of keeps stuff out, uh, fingers and all that stuff as well. Um, for the fare, I added a lock to the box um, just to keep people out uh, when I wasn't around, so that was a nice little addition. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. The uh, air kind of flows in here and out the back side. And, uh, and Another case upgrade was to use angle aluminum and bolts basically to keep the whole thing together whereas before I just had pieces of um, pieces of wood that I was uh, using wood screws. So this is much nicer, much more rigid and uh, has held up much better. Um, so that was a good upgrade for the case. Uh, at some point I could probably replace the wood panels with metal ones. So the next thing done on the lathe was to get the motor inside the uh, the case, basically. Um, prior to, it was sticking out over here and chips and stuff would get in it or around it and uh, probably not the best environment for a, uh, a motor. So getting in the box was uh, something I really wanted to do. Um, in order to do that, I had to set up a counter shaft, even though it wasn't needed for this machine because of the digital uh, speed controller. Um, but I do get a little more torque out of the pulleys anyways, which is a benefit, and um, and it works pretty well. At some point I'd like to replace it with something cast, maybe. And you can see in the back there's like a little tensioner. Um, you just kind of like tighten the, uh, you know, tighten that up to uh, to apply tension to this belt. So that that's worked out fairly well and um, and has added a little more torque. Now one of the final upgrades to the machine up to this point was to uh, add oilers here and here basically that um, provide a reservoir for the spindle you know bearing oil. Um, before I'd just be squeezing in oil every time I needed to use the machine. Now I can just fill up the reservoirs and uh, get a few operations out of it before I need to, to refill uh, the them. Outside diameter I uh, size to work perfectly with um, what is it, uh, lip balm, uh, the, like the little cover for lip balms, um, and those fit really nicely, they're easy to, you know, get on and off, basically, and, uh, upgrades as of, uh, September 27th of 2013, at this point, um, the machine's pretty much done, and, you know, uh, it, it works well, I'm using it now, but I do have some additional upgrades, like I'm working on a software upgrade so that I can index the spindle, um, and then I can create the graduated collars for the uh, hand wheels, um, on the, you know, for the compound, cross slide, lead screw, and, and that's something that I've wanted for a long time. And then uh, also I'd like to do a holder for my Dremel tool and the new quick change tool post and then I can combine that with the indexer so that I can, you know, grind keyways on stock so that I can, you know, I can do all sorts of different things. Um, which I think would be a nice addition to the machine. Um, and it's only a software upgrade. It's using the existing encoder wheel to index the spindle. And I have it working fairly accurately, being able to do uh, a large number of 360 degree rotations, hitting the same mark each time. So. Um, when that's ready, I'll put that out uh, on the blog for uh, download, and I'll do a video and all that stuff. Um, one other thing I need to do is to create a spindle lock so that uh, you know I can lock the spindle at each uh, you know at each index or whatever uh, to, to do the work without you know whatever I'm doing you know turning the spindle. So that'll be something that I'll be working on as well. Either something really quick that I put together, or I'll cast something. I'm not sure yet. So uh, so that's that's what's kind of coming for the lathe.